Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start uh, this lecture with a thought process that uh, all of we are here to learn, right? Learning is a process and uh, we should have love for learning. So, I always feel that love for learning lessens the labor pains of learning. Today, learning is a very difficult process for all of you, right? Because you people are occupied with several other things. And uh, therefore, it is very important you should develop a love for it and, and learning is a part and parcel of human life. Uh, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. We basically looked at that why we need to go for uh, agriculture as a basis for our growth, right. And why? Because, uh, you know, like we are having a naturally endowed with the resources which are very conducive and, uh, you know, for the agriculture or the farming. And later on, we looked at like uh, what are the processes involved in agriculture and how this modern agriculture being implemented as of now, right. And today, we will be looking at what are the problems we are facing with the modern farming and you know like uh, in 1950s uh, or the 60s you know like we are having green revolution. People are very much were uh, gaga about it and today also uh, some of the you know intellectuals are very saying that we need to go for second green revolution. Is it really revolution or not that we will see and I will so, uh, put forward or I will show you. Uh, some data to it, but let us uh, before that let us look at what are the problem in the modern agriculture. We use more fertilizers and more pesticide for what? Because more fertilizers will give the growth will be better and then you know production of the crop will be higher and more pesticide will have to give because the pests are the are more increasing at a number. Because uh, as a result that we are more pr profit maniac, you know, we are want to have a more greedy, greed, greedness has come to our mind too much, right. And there is a whole world not only in India across the because of this is what you call metallism. I, as I told earlier market metallism makes a man maniac. So, we became maniac, you know, like for profit, maniac for uh, grabbing all those things are going on in our mind. That is a det what you call uh, deterioration of mind power to think which is right, which is wrong, getting swayed away. So, therefore, that is the problem and then it is thrust upon us and we are just uh, not thinking about it. And pests and diseases are part and parcel of nature. Keep in mind that because one person will be relying on another, right, and they balance. And so also disease is the thing to decay and then you will be going. So, this is the part of nature. In ideal na system, natural balance between predators and pests are to be maintained. So, that you know each are connected with each other. These are all philosophy what are embedded in our uh, you know uh, traditional knowledge system in our ancient wisdom and which we need to understand. Ba basic things what we are talking about here you need to understand the basic laws of nature and then work accordingly, not going against and you know uh, imbalancing or doing something that balance will be broken. Balance is important because we uh, cannot really uh, look at only small micromanagement, the whole big picture we need to look at it. And big picture are very order and then it may be looking like a disorder, but actually as I told that our civilization order in disorder and that is natural. So, that has to be looked at. So, chemical control that is why we want to have a control over this uh, diseases and also the pests. So, that 
last 40 years you know insecticide use have increased tenfold while the crop losses from the pest damage have doubled losses are increasing and you are increasing that also right insecticide so one has to look at that why it is so and as a result the safety of the people 1 million cases of poisoning by pesticide each year around the world and up to uh, 20,000 of these results in death, this poisoning because of and it, this number may be more I mean like you know. And deaths occur in tropical countries where chemical pesticides which are banned in Europe and other western countries like USA are still being used in India. I mean there are several examples I am not going to look at it and you can see or for example DDT and then some other thing even urea people are not but we are using it here in this country. So uh, and cost of farming increasing at alarming rate and as a result food prices are also being increased very much around 300 percent in last 10 years and if you look at we are having a people who are hands to mouth, live like hands to mouth, laborers and everything, where they will get the food. Because the food price are now is a comparable to the global, global market and the earlier days food was very cheaper in this country. Whenever I visit other country, I feel oh we are safe, we are having at least food. A common person can get, today it is not. Because of globalization and you know, right. And problem with the industrial agricultural practice, yeah, I have already discussed, let me just uh, highlight some of the points, I will be highlighting more again because I want that some of the things will be repetitive in nature, but keep in mind these are important. We need to understand that, then only we can take character state. As I told that monocultures, basically the single kind of crop they use and that erodes the biodiversity among both plants and animals. It is not only with the plants only because all are connected. No? So therefore, that is creating. And uh, if you look at the nature, is always multi-layer or uh, you know various things. It's not heterogeneous. It's not homogeneous. We're trying to make it ho homogeneous because in engineering we do that, you know. <laughs> but that is not. <laughs> that is a wrong concept. You, it is not easier to handle the heterogeneous thing. You make it homogeneous. Therefore, you say that no, it nature is the other way around. It is your limitation that you are trying to push forward or the you know thrust upon the people. But you must understand that nature is not like that. And there is a strength in that. Synthetic chemical fertilizers are being used blatantly, which pollute the soil, not only the soil, water and air, all whatever the environment we are getting spoiled because of this blatant use of chemical fertilizers. I will be showing how it is so. And both environment and although not only the human health, but also the animal health, plant health, you know, all are being connected. So, soil which is the soul of infinite lives, right. And that is getting uh, spoiled you know much faster than it can be replenished. And taking with its land's fertility, the whatever the fertility nutrients the land, uh, the soil is having, it is going away and which are very important, this fertility and nutrients are very important for the growth of the plants and those things we eat as a food. But those are being getting away, you know. I will be showing you later on like uh, what are the things and I will also give you data how this most of the civilization got extinguished, got spoiled because of soil quality is going down at that time. We need to keep that and maybe in the next class I will show you some data. And water is consumed at unsustainable rates in many agricultural areas because water is being used too much. And it is also uh, helping to take away or uh, leaching out the what to call this fertility and nutrients which you are adding to the soil artificially and also the natural one, all are going away. <laughs> so,
So, you know you are using because of too much use of water. So, effect of pesticides on environment if you look at chemical pesticides can kill useful insects. There is a lot of you know microorganism insects are very useful pollination for pollination we need, but they are not you know and if pollination would not be there then you cannot have a food production. You may have very big plants, but you do not have. Nowadays in western country people are using artificial pollination you know like why you will do that and cost is in, will be increasing which aid the pest leading to the imbalance in nature whole mother nature is in imbalance. You are cutting the limbs of and you know fingers or the, you know if you look at a body my fingers are being cut my uh, you know hand being <laughs> removed from the mother nature you know mother nature if you consider it as a body that is not the way. So, therefore, you need to look at it and uh, as I told earlier artificial chemical can stay in environment in the bodies for a number of years right. Even if you want to use it will stay for in your thing for generation to generation and you cannot really afford to do that and causing problem for many years it is not for your generation it is for the next maybe. 5, 10 generation will have to suffer because of you have used the chemical fertilizers and which are not good for the health. So, therefore, we need to understand insect pests are very quickly or over a fear of breeding cycle they become resistant to artificial products. They also try to uh, resist the thing and develop a uh, hormones and other things so that they can because that is the nature, nature is intelligent you know they are working to go, suppose somebody will try to cheat you, you will have to protect yourself you know, right, find out ways and means, use your mind, use your body, use your resources, use your power to do that, they are also doing that way ok and are no longer controlled by the label of chemicals what we you were using earlier days. Uh, I will be showing you some data as well. So, if you look at fertilizer consumptions, you look at this in 1960s we are having fertilizer consumption is very very low if you look at this is the color uh, orange color that bound is very very low million tons maybe you know like one or two million tons and it is goes on increasing and so also China and then we are because we want to grow at a faster rate than the other people and that is the bigger problem. But if you look at America which is a very intelligent people you know like they have grown this is a higher increase from 1960 to maybe 80s they realize these are not good and they are almost remaining constant and sometimes going negative and I do not know the data last maybe 6, 7 years, but I am sure that they might have decreased it. So, if you look at we need to do that we will have to cut off and then the whole business you know they are sending their multi <laughs> company to here to swindle us and users and then spoil we will be intelligent and you know, we should understand this and then do that. So, uh, and if you look at we are uh, as we are using more fertilizers and more pesticides and other things we are spoiling also the ground water. I was told of course, this may not be the correct, but you please check do not go by any data I am giving please correct it check it and then accept it. Uh, in some newspaper this thing I learned that 60 percent of ground water in China are not drinkable in India you think about it. My guess is around maybe 20 to 25 percent of the at least in Kanpur I know there is a some area where the water has gone ground water has gone bad deadly bad. So, therefore, we need to and uh, worry about that because that sustains the life and if we spoil the ground water and which are interconnected how we are going to uh, what you call uh, correct it or how we are going to um, uh, replenish how we will do that. Can you take it out by the pump and again put it? Is it possible? All are connected, you know, like <laughs> interconnected, right. So, how we will, uh, you know, uh, take care of that polluted water? So, therefore, we will have to worry about. And if you look at the uh, fertilizer consumption, I know nitrogenous, there is a phosphatic type and potas, potassic type, it is all are increasing, you know, in, in 1991, where something 80 in lakhs tons you know this is in lakhs of tons 80 lakhs tons now one in 2007 166 and today maybe it will be something 175 or maybe 80 I do not know ok you please look at it. So, all are increasing 
we should decrease it, we should at least stabilize it, you know, because we know it is they are harmful, but still because our people are illiterate and then so also the thing and uh, the people are using advertisement and other thing to uh, what you call uh, lure them for this for the more uh, production and more uh, profit as a tool to imbibe them, you know, right, uh, lure them, but uh, all our we are spoiling the health. Let us look at how is the food production related to fertilizer consumptions, right. So, uh, if you look at that, uh, this is uh, I have taken the data from 70 to 2002, it is a little old data, but let us look at the trend. This blue color is fertilizer consumption rate, it is going up, sometimes in 75 it is gone up above the red line that is corresponding to the million tons of uh, food production. And then if you look at it is uh, food production is lowered down at least 95 onwards and the fertilizer consumption is increasing. And let me tell you last year I had gone to some nearby village in uh, Kanpur where uh, people are you know uh, and then I inquired with the farmers, I told what are the consumption, they are saying that we are using almost double the fertilizers what we are using. 10 years back for getting the same you know tonnage for acre kind of air crop. See look at what we are doing, that means the soil fertility has gone down and you are adding more and more and then it will be spoiling, right. So therefore, the farmer is committing suicide because the cost of farming is increasing at an alarming rate than the what price they can get in, in the you know uh, what you call market. As a result, you know, they are in debt. Therefore, government of India is, you know, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, taking away their debt in the sense giving the, what you call, subsidies. No, not subsidy. It is maap kar dete na, like, uh, 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 waving, waving of the loans. They are waving of the loans. But that is not the solution. Solution has to be found out looking at what are the causes of it and then look at fundamentally and solve the problem. And there all of you uh, who are listening to these lectures and then you will have to come into picture and educate them and also educate the government about these wrong policies of using these concepts because you know we are democracy we should do that. And uh, the growth uh, is I mean we are all talking about the green revolutions and other thing we want to have another green revolution people are talking about genetically modified crops and I am afraid one should not venture to that. Of course, there are several reasons I will be not talking about why you need to, but you will have to if you are interested get into that and find it out yourself. So, the growth rate of the crop production let us look at what happened in our uh, the green revolution. So, let us look at that uh, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in this diagram for the wheat, we are talking about pre green revolution something 1951 to 1968 we are having something 37 you know is the tons of this. So, uh, this I have taken the data from the draft of 12 plan document Delhi planning commission and 2013 right. So, let us say this is the percentage you know what you are having then it has been decreased in the green revolution period 69 to 81 okay. And then it is again little bit increase up and then going down and then down again this thing then again people are increasing because of in the seventh plan and that is true with if you look at this point you know for the rice, for the wheat and then pulses for oil seeds of course, oil seed has a little bit gone up I mean corresponding to this 1951 and, uh, and uh, in the today kind of uh, today means 11 and 12, but uh, wheat and rice and pulses you know it is uh, lower than that what it was there in pre this thing. So, therefore, you can judge from yourself and this data I have taken from uh, this thing that look this is, uh, is a myth that we are having a green revolution okay? because the crop we are putting lot of pesticide, lot of fertilizer and this thing, but uh, we are not growing I mean like, of course, there is a various fluctuation depending upon your what you call your uh, climates and there is depending upon other parameters you know that is there. So, one has to look at data and analyze it and then only we can say that look 
there is a green room. And beside this, we are paying price for the what? For this use of these chemicals, fertilizer, pesticides, spoiling soil, air, and other thing. We will be talking about what are the problems of chemical fertilizer. Let us understand that. And there is a micronutrient imbalance because of utilizing the chemical fertilizers. Because we know that chemical fertilizers contain nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, which are micronutrients. These are the micronutrients, you know, you can think of. And excess use of fertilizers during the farming causes micronutrient imbalance, because the soil you are giving artificial. If you are giving artificial, you know, soil will be imbalanced. Maybe you are adding more than what is required. So, excess of anything is bad, right. You need to know that. What are the things? And there will be also imbalance because of uh, root will be taking and then it will be not taking all the things, it will be remaining. I will be talking about uh, later on about you know like ro uh, root, how they take and what will be the size of roots, if we use chemical fertilizer, if we use natural farming, all those things I will be talking about little bit later on, particularly when I will go to the natural farming. Excess is a particular affect the soil fertility adversely and also the productivity as I told just now that uh, which my own experience talking with the farmers nearby the Kanpur area. They are saying they are using large number of uh, you know large amount of fertilizer for the same amount of crop production in the same land right over the years and that is true that you can see I mean you can ask anybody and you are having also data nowadays internet you can get the data and uh, maybe from reliable source because the internet one has to be careful about the data right. You can go to the government sources, some other things, then you can find it out. What are the consumptions? You know, I have shown you already that. So, there is a nitrate pollution like excess nitrogen, nitrogenous fertilizers leach deep into the soil because you are using a lot of water also, irrigation, you know, like and there is a ground water you are using, using the pump, you know, power, right, electricity and then diesel and the lift irrigation system has now come up, right. And you just press a button and then water will be spread over this thing. So, and it is sometimes I have seen at least in the nearby Kanpur area that is they use a lot of water unnecessarily. And that can contaminate the ground water also. And that is happening in lot of areas and other water pod is nearby. It is being spoiled by the you know nitrous fertilizer. And if the concentration of nitrate in the drinking water exceeds 25 milligram per liter, it affects mortality rate and the low weight of the newborn babies which is basically these uh, you know low weight and I think known as a uh, blue baby syndromes right and which is showing I will show you a diagram maybe uh, next uh, slides that um, and blue baby syndrome refers to at least two situation one is cyanotic heart means you know there will be heart arteries which will be th you know big uh, thicker and then it will be thinner that problem will be there. And this methemoglobinemia that means like a anemia you know like blood uh, will be less and then now it will be little bit uh, different than that. So, this causes a problem in the blood itself. So, uh, you can look at the, this term I am not uh, you know sure about that, but you look at that. So, uh, what is that? I mean this is causing problem which will be with the baby itself, you know, then where you will go, <laughs> right. So, these are very uh, serious problem of the blue baby syndromes and there is another problem which come eutrophication. Eutrophication basically when you use excess fertilizer that can pass to the nearby water bodies, bodies okay. And as a result this there will be over nourishments in this uh, pond water bodies and which is known as eutrophication because the overness if overnourishment will be there then what will happen that uh, the algae you know there will be lot of growth in algae at the faster rate and then they will grow very rapidly right and then again they will die and then as a result because their life is short and they die and pollute the water affecting the aquatic life adversely. That you might have seen that in your uh, you know observation if you are having good observation. See the cause is this one. So, therefore, this causes and that is the problem. 
If you look at this pesticide, there are two kinds of pesticide people use. First generation pesticide, you use sulfur, arsenic, lead and mercury to kill pests. Look at these are all you know dangerous you know <laughs> elements one should avoid it, but we are using. The second generation of course, the DDT, what is dichlodiphenyl trichloroethene used to kill uh, pests and these pesticides are organic nature of course, but uh, pesticides protect our crop from severe losses due to pest, but they have several side effects you know you can think of there are several side effects you should not be used as such. And side effects of pesticide as I told that uh, basically they of non target organisms. Suppose you want to kill X, but now you will be killing Y, Z and uh, you know other things and which are beneficial. So, several insecticide kill not only the target space, but also the several beneficial and uh, organism which are not of target. And as I told that after you know use this paste, paste several times, the people the, those are also living organisms, they try to resist. And certain paste, of course, certain things may not resist properly, but certain pests that could manage to survive became highly resistant to all kinds of pesticides you know and though these pests are called as super pests like super man you know <laughs> they become super pests. So, and bio magnifications is uh, another thing most pesticides non biodegradable right it is not it cannot be degraded by the soil or other things. So, get into food chain which is known as bio accumulation it will getting accumulated. And these pesticides in bioaccumulation form are harmful to the human beings and we, as I told it will remain for your body chain you know chain, chain food chain for several time and also in your own body right and it will be transmitted you know various forms. And surface and ground water pollution uh, you know like toxicity to aquatic wildlife and human through drinking waters right all those things. Risk of cancers like uh, pesticide enhances the risk of getting cancer in two ways it acts as a carcinogen also and it indirectly spoils the immune system. You might be aware there is a train known as cancer train which is originated from Punjab. You are aware all of you? There is a train all cancer patient will be coming you know. That is why people call it cancer because they in Punjab Haryana region they are using these pesticides and fertilizers to larger extent. They can say the rice what you call wheat bowl or the food bowl of India, but they are really spoiling their own health and then giving us food and that is also not of good quality. So, I will stop over here and we will be looking at the uh, what you call disadvantages or the of the using this modern uh, farming in the next lecture and later on I will tell about like what is the quality of food we are using. And then we will be looking at basically why we need to go for the ancient technology for the agriculture. Thank you very much.